Hello, this is Coach Tim Campbell, and I'm your host for Self Made as a Myth, Make a Difference Together show, where we are talking with successful business owners about their journey to building their business. And because we know that success in business doesn't come on our own, we're taking some time to recognize and give some shout outs to the folks who have helped us along the way. I'm excited to have a fellow business owner from Georgia with us today. My guest runs a podcast company, and in her downtime, she likes to spend it with family hiking and exploring, and she is most proud of her kids, and she's got a story that she's going to share with us about that today. It's my pleasure to welcome Rachel to the show. Hello, Rachel. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me on. This is going to be fun. Absolutely. Well, hey, let's start with having you. Um, introduce yourself, tell us about a uh, little bit of your background, your personal story, you know, where you live, about your family and some of your hobbies. Sure. Thanks. So um, I'll try and be really succinct here, but uh, born and raised in Indianapolis, and I know that's your stomping grounds. And our family has just relocated to the Atlanta, Georgia area. We've got um, three kids, two, four, six, and so life's a little bit crazy and busy. <laughs> um, and really right now we're enjoying just exploring our new environment, hiking and even enjoying like more of the the city and some of the options and opportunities that are presented to us here. Um, and I guess a little snapshot into my professional career is in 2016, I um, started getting into podcasting, launched the business officially in 2017. At the time I was in law school, dropped out of law school and went all in on um, the podcast company that we have today. Fantastic. Well, go, I'll get you to tell us a little bit more about that here in a minute. But is there a funny story, Rachel, that your family likes to tell about you that you'd be willing to share with us today? A funny story that my family, well, I'll tell you, um, we have a silly tradition. This is from being a child and you had um, my brother on the show a while back, so you'll have to check out his episode, but his name is Zach Eltz, and um, the reason that that's relevant is every year as a family, as you guys can you know, think of like Thanksgiving and all of that, I come from a really large family, a lot of siblings, a lot of cousins, the whole thing, and, it, and I'm like the youngest of the entire crew, and um, what would happen is every Thanksgiving, they would find funny things to make fun of me for. And I would cry every year, every year at the kids table, I would cry. And so now it's just been like a running joke forever of like, um, for Thanksgiving, how can we make Rachel cry? And it's all done in fun and love. It's, it's not like right? bullying or anything like that, but, um, it's kind of a funny family, uh, tradition of let's make Rachel cry this year. <laughs> That's awesome. Bunch of bullies, eh? Yeah. No kidding. Little kid getting made fun of. <laughs> So tell us, how did the business come about? And at what point did you have the confidence that you could run your own business? So I would say I've always had a, um, I've always had the gumption and confidence to go do my own thing. I mm -hmm. think becoming a leader takes a whole different level of confidence and ability um, that I'm working on, like from a, from a personal perspective. That is something that I have to remind myself of that I'm capable of doing because doing something on your own to just make some little bit of money is a lot different than leading an organization and leading people. Um, but I would say in 2016, I had um, my first daughter and she was born three months early. And so when something like that happens, you start to take stock of what like what is life now going to look like because I wasn't really sure. Um, so she was born at 26 weeks. At the time, I was in law school, and so I found myself at the hospital for, you know, 12 to 18 hours a day, just being present with her so that I could be like physically with her. And then I would leave and go to class, and I would um, study and that kind of thing. And during that time, I just kept thinking to myself, I need to figure out a way to make money where I can control my own schedule because I wasn't sure what her life would look like. And at that time, like serendipitously, a friend reached out to me and he said, hey, will you help me launch and promote my podcast? I had had a career in content marketing, had always done some PR type stuff and kind of knew my way around some of the essentials there. And so I was like, sure, I'll do that. He was paying me like 25 bucks an hour. I think something that was like, okay, this is great. While I'm in law school, I can do this from the hospital. I can do it at 3 a.m. and nobody's going to know, like it's not going to affect anybody. <laughs> So I started doing this for him. And um, what we quickly saw was that his show 
was giving him the opportunity he needed to launch his own brand and his own content. And I just had never seen a channel work so well um, from a, from a relationship building perspective, from a content perspective, from a promotional, like content creation asset from like all of the things I was like, this is a Swiss army knife of marketing. And so fast forward, I had my daughter home. Everything was kind of getting back into like a, a, a schedule and a life routine. She was born without um, her lower left leg. And that was the only challenge that sort of presented ourselves ongoing. And so I still wanted flexibility over my time and my calendar so that I could take her to her appointments and things like that. And so I went back to my friend and I said, hey, I want to do this for other people. Will you help me? And he was like, let's do it. And um, in 2018, at that point, we had been doing it enough where I was starting to see some market traction and some market affirmation. And so um, I went all in and I dropped out of law school and I've been doing that ever since. Wow, that is fantastic. Just how how everything just sort of came into, into line and the flexibility that you needed and gave you exactly what you needed when you needed it. It's amazing what happens when you just take action, you know, <laughs> like things start to come into place and you just pay attention. I like to say that I live accidentally on purpose. Um, <laughs> like I'm not smart enough to like think all these things into life. Right. But I will say that I, uh, I'm always willing to take a step forward and see like what kind of paths come about because of it. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit more about the company, the name, what do you guys do? How do you help people? Sure. So the, the company name is Share Your Genius and we provide end-to-end production services. Um, and it's really the thing that we're really excited about and helping our clients do is how can we use conversations to help them accomplish their goals with their marketing objectives as it relates to content creation and um, driving their business objectives forward. Wonderful. Tell us a story, Rachel, of where maybe somebody pushed you or inspired you that you could do it, even though you maybe had doubts and the impact that that person had. Yeah. So um, I think I would, I would hearken back to my first business partner. Um, His name is Jim Brown. And he was the guy that asked me to help him launch his podcast and help her promote it. And um, I think the thing that he did so masterfully is he instilled confidence by just kind of like, A, he also bet on me. Like Mm -hmm. he was like, let's do this together. And so when someone else says you can do it, you start to believe it. Um, but the second thing that he did is he pushed me out of my comfort zone. Like he was, he was sort of like a safety net, except, except he made me do everything. (laughs) Um, and I think that was, those are those things that you need people to do people who will let you fail, um, Mm. so that you can learn people who will, um, believe in you without having, without you having to prove anything. And then when you start to prove to yourself, you start to realize, wow, their belief in me proved that I could do it, but it was also the belief I had in myself that made it possible. And so um, I always think about him. And one of the things that was really special is during the one of the first years of our business together, him and his family decided to travel the world. So they took 12 months and they went to a new um, country every single month for 12 months. And this was like when our company was a baby, like we were still (laughs) trying to figure out, you know, our product and things like that. And, um, we shared, we shared an office at the time at launch Fishers, which is in, um, Indiana. And he wrote on the big whiteboard, be great. That's what he wrote on the whiteboard. So I came into the office the day after he had left and I sat down and right in front of me was the sign that just said, be great. And I left it there the entire (laughs) year that he was gone. And it was just a constant reminder of like, he's not there. I'm doing this on my own. I mean, he helped me from afar, that kind of thing. But I was on my own doing this, building this business that we were still figuring out everything for. And I just had this constant reminder of like, be great. Um, And that was a choice. Like I could have, you know what I mean? It's a choice to actually strive and do something different and do something that, um, you know, that takes like time and, and energy and all of that. And, um, that was very meaningful to me. And it's actually our core value that we've carried through the business to date is just this idea and this, this realization of like, in life, you can choose to be good. You can choose to be adequate. You can choose all of these things, but for us, we're going to choose to be great. That's fantastic. I love that idea of that daily and, and sometimes minute by minute decision that we have to either 
you know, we're going to do something good. We're going to, we're going to go at this or we're going to give up on ourselves and, and crawl, <laughs> crawl back into a hole and just let the world pass us by. Exactly. And it was, it was just, it was exactly what I needed. Um, and it's the thing that has really kept the spark all these years later. So I, I'm just playing back what you just said. So your new business partner decides to leave you for a year uh, uh, with your new business and and his words of advice is be great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, Rachel, what's been your biggest learning um, as a business owner? Um, I think my one of my biggest, it's hard to say the biggest because I feel like, and you can relate to this, I feel like every week there's a big learning, <laughs> right? You're just like, what the heck? Um, but I think the biggest learning that I've had is, um, is just, is kind of goes back to the ethos of what we're just talking about is like this unrelenting belief Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, being a business owner, being a leader of a company, it is a roller coaster ride. There are days that are amazing. There are days that are horrible. There are moments that are amazing. There are moments that are horrible. And it's like, how do you continue moving forward when you're in the valleys? And honestly, even when you're in the highs, because with the highs come the lows immediately. You know what I mean? Because it's like, even if you're hitting a a high level of like great sales, great revenue, great growth, then on the other side, you have to optimize for all of that. You have to actually service the thing that you just sold. You know what I mean? And so that requires all cylinders going at full blast sort of all of the time. Um, And so it's it's keeping that belief and and the ability to move forward, even when you don't always know how. Um, So I would say that's always been my big, that's kind of my biggest learning that can apply to all areas is just like this unrelenting belief of what is possible um, when you just keep moving forward. Um, You mentioned the roller coaster. So it's interesting that uh, all of us go through the roller coaster, but not a whole lot of people tend to talk about it. So when when it's happening to us, it's like, am I the only one that's experiencing this? (laughs) No, you're not. You are not the only one. (laughs) And even if you're not a business owner, like if you're if you're working on something that, um, you know, it, it like it goes again, it goes, if you're trying to be great, like if that is what you're doing and that doesn't mean you have to be a business owner, that could just be that you're a, you're a person that's working at a company that you really believe in the mission and the purpose. And you know what I mean? And you're striving to be bigger than what you were better than you were yesterday. Um, you will be on a roller coaster because you have to stretch. You have to be uncomfortable in order to get there. Yeah. The, I, I'm in a mindset coaching program and the analogy that our coach uses is, how do you climb a mountain? You don't go straight up, right? You've got to, you've got to go back and forth because that's the way to, to ascend. And, um, I actually have that picture in a mind movie that I watch every day because uh, I need that reminder of, oh yeah, right. Sometimes you actually have to go back down in order to get to the right spot to be able to get, you know, keep climbing and keep getting to your ultimate goal. And, um, those that roller coaster ride or those descents down or those those pivots across can feel like they're completely in the wrong direction. Um, but it's really just preparing us and building us to be able to get to the next level. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Like sometimes in business too, it does feel like you take two steps back to take one forward, but it's like those two steps back help create a firmer foundation than if you were to just keep trudging ahead. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, And that can be challenging, like if you're somebody who's impatient, like I am, (laughs) or like, um, you know, like that is the kind of stuff that can feel draining, but it's like keeping that belief of like, no, 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 I'm getting to the top because I see something, you know what I mean? And I want to go figure out what that is. So keep going forward. Yes. A a good question in those times is what good can come from this, right? Mm. So why am I experiencing this? today that feels like a setback what what's going on what am i supposed to learn from this what a, what can i change in my business as a result of this that's going to prepare us for the next step i love that yeah i am going to take that what good can come from this that's awesome <laughs> rachel we know that business success doesn't happen in isolation so tell us about um one of your challenges during the years and um maybe a fellow business owner who came alongside you and helped you to get through that yeah, so I would say you said fellow business owner, but I will I'm going to pivot from that because I talked a lot about my original business owner who's really helped me through a lot of the seasons. Um and we're no longer business partners, but he's definitely somebody that I can still call for like phone a friend. But I will share more of um, you know, as a business owner, as a business leader, you have to have a support system. 
Otherwise you will fail. Like you have to have people who come alongside you. And, um, and during COVID in 2020, um, me and my husband had our third child and we were sort of in this like fork of the road moment because, um, you know, all of the, the childcare options were gone. Like all of our kids were home. Um, I was still growing this business. He has a full-time career as well and something that he's really good at and passionate about. But we were in this like fork of the road moment of like, okay, we don't know when this is going to end. Just had this baby. I can either slow down the growth of my own business and cut back. Um, or what, like, what do we do? Because we have to take care of a newborn. And one of the things that he actually did is he said, how about I quit my job and oh. I'll stay home and watch the kids so that you can keep moving forward with the business instead of taking a step back. Cause it's starting to gain some momentum. Yeah. Um, and so that's what he did. So for like, I think it was like six months, he, um, took a step back in his career and helped take care of our babies. So he would <laughs> like, like I'd be in a meeting and then after the meeting, he'd like bring me our son <laughs> like, <laughs> so that I could feed him. <laughs> and like, um, you know, he just like really helped step up in that moment because we had no options. And then when the daycares opened back up and we were able to send our kids and, um, thankfully we were able to find some really good care for our, our son and, you know, things just sort of <clears throat> worked itself back out, but it was like, we needed to make a decision in that season of like, do we lean into what you've got going on from a business perspective or what? And he was just willing to make that sacrifice so that we could continue to move forward. And that I always think about that as like a pivotal moment mm -hmm. in helping us move forward. Yeah. What's your husband's name? Austin. Austin. Well, mm -hmm. wonderful. What a, what a, uh, a, a selfless thing to do for, for you and the family. I, that's just an amazing story. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. And now obviously you guys have moved. So his, his, he, he, his career came back and you yep. guys had an opportunity to have a new adventure in Georgia. That's right. Yeah. Very See, cool. it's like, I think that's the other thing, like from a business perspective and even like thinking about the audience, it's like those moments of belief of like, even if in the moment, you're not sure how things are going to work itself out instead of letting fear drive decisions, mm -hmm. let faith, you know what I mean? Just like believe in the thing and like, just because one door shuts even temporarily, it doesn't mean you're not going to have 55 open more right. <laughs> like down the road. Yeah, yes. Like the, it's not the, all endings, you know, the universe, God, whatever your, your yeah. beliefs are, has a, a, a positive desire for us. If we're just willing to take, you know, the unknowns, right. The go through this opportunity or go through this door, take this risk because ultimately there's a better, there's a better tomorrow ready for us. If we're just willing to, to take the the quote unquote risk of the unknown, right? That's right. That's exactly right. And the fear of the unknown can be pretty strong for folks. So, you know, the, and the for I everyone, I should do it, right? Because I don't know what's going to happen. Well, so I, so you mentioned mindset coaching. I had a, a mindset coach um, talk to me about intuition and just like it's one of the most powerful things that we all possess and have access to. But a lot of times we don't know how to listen to it or hear it. Yeah. And so one of the things that he talked to us about, and this is a company based out of Indianapolis called Dream Fuel, Kevin Bailey, but um, he was like, you you can physically feel your intuition. And so you can sit on a question or a, or a problem or a thing and you can close your eyes. And he was like, feel how your body actually feels. Like, do you feel sick in your stomach or do you feel light? Are you moving forward? Like your body will actually like shake its head and and move itself in the direction that's in line with your gut if you sit in it. Yeah. Um, and so I think that those, those are some of the things like as a business uh, leader or owner, it's like, you're going to deal with a lot of questions and a lot of like challenges of like, where do I go? Like, is, is this fear driving me or is my belief driving me? And like your intuition can tell you a lot. Yeah. Meditation is a powerful thing. I used to think that whole idea of the law of attraction and meditating was all a bunch of foo foo until I I started embracing it and and realizing to your point right like wow our our uh, our intuition the universe God whatever again whatever your your beliefs are is wow like there is there is a powerful force that's guiding and directing us if we just pay attention to it oh, yeah I mean I could not agree more if I was to ask you I'll put you on the spot here to pick three people. Um, throughout your business journey uh, that you are most grateful for being there to help you with your overall growth and success. Who are those three people and how'd they help you? So one, again, I keep talking, this is not the 
Jim Brown episode, but it, Jim Brown, obviously, <laughs> sure. he was the first person who <laughs> kind of ponied up to help me get where I'm at today. Um, the second one I would say is uh, Tiffany Souter. She's she runs a marketing agency in Indianapolis called Element Three, and she's actually um, uh, a part owner, business partner for Sherry Genius. Um, so she's helping take us to the next level, if you will. Um, and so she's been instrumental in that. And then that third spot is really hard because there's so many people who have come around to really like pour into us, um, and help us be great. Um, but I think in the spirit of, uh, continuity and, um, family as I'll say my brother. So my brother, Zach, um, he's also somebody who is an entrepreneur and somebody who's always kind of led by example and, um, in, in a, uh, maybe it's a family trait, but just like this unwavering confidence in our own abilities. Mm. Um, and so I've always seen him just work through a ton of challenges that he's had and stay positive. And so um, I would say those three people stand out to me in this moment. Fantastic. I did say I was going to put you on the spot. So I know, I know, right. There's more, way more than three people. So it's just, so a, many. it's a fun little exercise to understand, right. Who comes to mind and, um, and yes, for everyone else who wasn't mentioned, there are tons of other people, right, Rachel, that so if, many, if we had time, we'd be able to list them all, but <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> we don't. So as you think about the next three to five years, what are the, um, the biggest challenges that you see that you're going to face in, in reaching your goals for the company and who are the types of people that you're going to need to solve those challenges? Yeah, I think, um, I think like any like anyone, we're paying really close attention to technology and AI and how it's going to be a useful tool for the business that we're in. And so um, just really leaning into the right partners, the right technology that can help us create um, better partnerships with our clients, better outcomes for our clients. So I'm really paying attention to that. Um, I think that the world, because of that, the world is going to demand better content. I think it's going to like demand more authentic, more human, more, um, you know, more content, more engaging content that sort of has to cut through the noise because content can be created at such a high clip. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're looking for amazing storytelling tellers, like people who just see the world differently or who, who understand how to ask the right questions. So I think talent is critical to the success of, um, our company. Um, and then I think just the other side of it is just, um, you know, personal life. I mean, I've got three kids and, um, you know, navigating school and navigating some of the things that I want for them in their life um, and trying to give them the opportunities that are really in, are really meaningful to them. So it's just like, how do you find the right balance while you're still trying to grow a company um, yeah. while you're raising humans? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> right. Those are, that's kind of my high level uh, answers. And then I think the right people outside of just great talent for Share Your Genius, um, we're looking for innovative creators for brands who want to do something different. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, who are the people out there that are are thinking about content differently that are looking for the right partner? Like that's who, that's who I'm thinking about right now. Wonderful. You mentioned um, balance. So I know we're all trying to figure this out, but uh, how how do you approach that? How do you, you know, keep that, that, balance of driving a, a growing business and raising a family? Well, I think um, this is something Tiffany Souter has taught me, but it's just getting really clear on like who you are and what you want. Mm. Um, I think as a leader, we often forget about what we want and um, we think it's selfish or we think whatever. But in reality, if I don't know what I want, I actually can't lead my team well. Um, and so I like to create space for myself and, and I probably do this at least once a quarter where I'm like, am I actually doing what I want to do? Mm -hmm. Um, cause the minute I'm not doing what I want to do, uh, candidly, I'm not going to create the best outcomes and I'm not going to be the most present leader or parent. Yeah. Um, and so I think just taking the time to really reflect on who I am and what I want is really critical. And I think re recognizing that that can change over time, like giving myself permission to realize that can change has been critical as well. Um, but I do that. And then the other thing is um, I'm really intentional about my mornings. Um, even if that, that doesn't mean I'm waking up at 4.30. I wish that I, that was me, but I just can't <laughs> sustain that. Um, 
But I mean, when my, my kids are dropped off at school, I don't jump right into work. I go work out or I go do yoga or I, I just take 15 minutes and just like reflect and like read some devotional or, or meditate to your point earlier and just like get my mind right, even if it's five minutes. Yeah. Um, but that's critical to me being successful. Um, so yeah, those I, are my tips. <laughs> I liked um, you mentioned just making sure that you're identifying what you want and and building that into your into your plans and into your routine. And it just, it makes me think about the, our clients do 90 day planning. And, and one of the sections is personal, right? There has to be a personal goal and personal strategies, because if we don't do it, it just won't happen. Right. Because it won't. life is too busy already. <laughs> oh my gosh. And there's so many things pulling at you um, at all times. And so it's like, how do you cut the noise is you have to cut the fat. Right. And so it's like, what are the things I actually want to do? Is this moving me towards? And you don't have to have it like completely crystallized. You know what I mean? It's just this idea of like accidentally on purpose. It's like, yeah. I know that I want to feel this way or I want to have this type of outcome for my life. Yeah. How I get there doesn't always matter, but I need to know what it is yes. so that I'm making the right decisions along the way to get me there. I like that you, you've mentioned a couple of times, but accidentally on purpose, that's just a, a brilliant way to, to phrase it, you know, frame it up in terms of what happens because we can't control everything. Right. Mm -hmm. But what I like about what you're saying is if we've got a general sense or an idea of where we want to end up, then it's easy to say no to the stuff that's not congruent with that. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's the hardest part of being a business leader or business owner is like, is actually saying no, because mm -hmm. we want to say yes to so many things because like we see the world. We're like so excited by opportunities. Otherwise, we wouldn't be running businesses. Right. <laughs> um, but it's like having the discipline to be like, oh, no, no, not right now. Yes. yes. <laughs> I struggle with that. <laughs> yeah. And because like you said earlier, it is nothing is for sure. So even we don't know if we say yes to something or no to something, if it was the right thing, right? So we've got to rely on our, back to your point about our instinct and our gut, we've got to just trust that, that we've put the right things in place, generally speaking, and a no is not going to be tragedy and, right. And, and just kind of accidentally on purpose flow with it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I love what you just said. A no is not tragedy. Like, that's something that I've always struggled with is like, if I close that door, like it's never going to open again. And it's like, well, even if that's true, that doesn't mean that's the only door ever. Exactly. You know, <laughs> like there are so many doors and there's doors that haven't even been built yet. Right. You know what I mean? Like life is just like full of the, like of unexpected things. And I think if we think about this idea of like, I'm going to expect, I'm going to, I'm expecting the unexpected. If we lean into that, how much more fun and exciting does life become? Right. <laughs> and it's not like the, again, to the, the no, it's not like we're going to be shut down from any more opportunities because every day thousands of opportunities come our way. It's just a matter of choosing which one's right for us. Exactly. Yes. Love that. Rachel, last question here. Um, Jim Rohn, awesome uh, business guru. One of the one of the quotes I love that he says is, "We become the average of the five people that we spend the most time with." So, as you reflect on that quote, um, and you think about all the business owners who are trying to do it on their own and and feel like they can't reach out to other people and ask for help, what advice would you have for those folks? That's a lie. You can reach out to so many people. Um... I mean, half my half of what I do is meet with people with no agenda, mm. just to just to understand who they are and what, what who they are and what they want, honestly. Um, and asking for help is the is the not even asking for help, but just asking questions that you need answers to. Mm. It's not asking for help to be like, I don't know this thing. You know what I mean? And even if you think you know something, playing dumb will help you grow immensely. <laughs> right. And so I think it's just like leaning into asking questions puts you in a better position in every facet of your entire life. And I don't know if it's ego or pride or what, but it's like, just like cut that off. Like, even if you think it's a dumb question and maybe it was something ingrained in school where it was like, you didn't want to ask a question because you didn't want to sound dumb. Yeah. And I'm like, who cares if you sound dumb? The people not asking the questions, they're actually dumb because right. they're not understanding the things that they don't know. Yeah. And so I would just be like, 
get in front of, like, I would make a challenge to myself. If that's somebody listening that feels that way is I would say, find two people that you want to meet and know without any agenda other than they might be able to shed some light on something that they've experienced that might help you. I would be like, I'm going to find two people and see if they'll meet me for coffee. And if this is an, if you're in Indiana, everyone will meet with you. Like that is like the Indianapolis business community is insane. Go network. Go, 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 go. I was just going to say, I've never had anybody who I've reached out to and say, Hey, would you mind, you know, gifting me some of your time to, to learn about you and your business? Nobody's ever said no. No, I, I will tell you if somebody emails me and says, I want to pick your brain. Now that I'm like, no, ma'am, or no, sir. Like, I want you to say like to you, what you said is great. I'd love to learn more about you. Like that is amazing. Um, But I would say, and the other thing I would say is like, listen to podcasts. There are these amazing business leaders, these amazing people who have solved all these problems. And you will learn so much just by listening to their stories and their experiences. And you don't have to ask them to meet with you. You can just listen to them on a podcast. Um, but absolutely go network. Absolutely. And and I'm pretty sure too, if you listen to the podcast and you reach out to the host and say, hey, I I, I really enjoyed something that I, li- you know, you talked about, would you be willing to meet for a coffee? I, again, pretty sure they're going to Pretty say- sure they'll say yes. Unless it's Joe Rogan. He's a little <laughs> right. busy. Yeah, yeah, right. But you get what I'm saying. Like, I mean, let's like, there's no reason not to meet. For sure. Amen to that. Rachel, sounds like you've been blessed with some incredible people in your life. If they were on the show here today, what would you want to say to them? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, just thank you. Like, I mean, words are never enough. You know what I mean? But um, I think the thing that we have to take away is the people who have invested in you and who have believed in you, you have a responsibility to help somebody else. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's a thank you and I'll pay it forward. I love that pay it forward. In fact, I'm, I close out our, our podcast with that because um, I've had so many people who have gifted me their time that um, it's just a natural, hey, why wouldn't I pay it forward? Because people have done it for me and I've learned and, and grown so much from those folks that if I could be fortunate enough to be able to help somebody else with the the learnings that I have, it it's actually it's a gift to myself to be able to know that I could help somebody else. Absolutely. Rachel, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. This was super fun. To everyone who tuned in, thanks for listening to the Self-Made as a Myth show with your host, Coach Tim Campbell. Be sure to help spread this movement by liking the show and posting about it on your social media. And to join our movement, go to bemadtogether.com. All right, folks, that's a wrap. Make sure to pay it forward and I'll see you all next time. Take care.